I might need help. I got New World nine days ago, and I've already played a hundred hours. So, I guess it's fair to say maybe I'm a little addicted to it. Now, I want to talk about the goal for this video in the beginning of it, because I want the video to be a catch-all for anyone that might find it. First off, I have a core audience that mostly plays Pokemon, or is mostly interested in my Pokemon Guide content, and they might want to know why I haven't been streaming or making as many videos over the last week. This game is primarily why. Now also, there's going to be like New World players coming to this video for advice, because even though I feel like I came late to the party, I'm kind of far ahead. And if I'm not, then that's also why I'm making the video. Like, I want to know where I stand. Where should someone find themselves after a hundred hours of gameplay? And if enough people watch the video, leave a like to help with the algorithm and comment down below, then we can actually find out, like, where people are standing after X amount of game time. I can break down my character stats, what I've been up to, what I've been doing, all of that fun stuff. I haven't been taking the game seriously, but I still feel like I'm doing pretty well. Maybe I'm average, maybe I'm above average, maybe I'm underperforming. Either way, I'm just, I've am just i just been vibing, I've just been addicted. And that also kind of brings me to the other group of people that might find this video. If I'm doing a 100 hour review of New World, people might just want to know what's going on with R New World. And my long story short is the meme of this being RuneScape 4 is accurate. If you love RuneScape, mindless grinding to watch numbers go up, this game is for you. I played RuneScape back in 2006 when I was in middle school. I'd be up all night. Parents would not be happy when they'd go to the bathroom or like wake up early and find me on the family computer playing RuneScape at 3 in the morning when it's a school night. But that was me. And then I would just waste time in very inefficient ways, just chilling however I wanted to. And this kind of, like, now that I'm older, now that I'm more mature and I have more experience, I feel like I'm just playing more efficiently and I'm, like, understand MMOs better. But it's kind of the same vibe. Like, I can just play all night doing whatever in this game, and it, it's very satisfying. So that's kind of, like, the review portion of it, in a way. It's like, yeah, I can just blow 100 hours, I can sink 10 hours a day into this game just playing all night. And Another thing about New World is that it makes me feel like I'm in a very heavy Minecraft grind. Because whenever my friend group gets together and we make a modded Minecraft server, I go crazy over that. That's my, I'm playing 12 hours plus a day for weeks, and I am going to beat Minecraft. Now, of course, there's the argument like, well, you can't beat Minecraft. No, no, no. I play to beat Minecraft modded servers, and this happens a couple times a year. Not as much as it used to, because we've effectively beaten everything. Like, all the good, um... Feed the Beast mod packs. Like all the all those, we've we've crushed those. So that's how I play New World. I watch numbers go up, I accumulate way too many resources, and I just get obsessed with it. So that's kind of like how the breakdown of this is. If that's your thing, if grinding is for you, this whole looter MMO kind of feel, then yeah, New World's pretty good. However, I did have, like, it did have hiccups for me. There were points where I was just like, do I really want to play this? I'm a busy man. I've got things to do. And that was kind of around level 20. And that might be, like, the breakpoint, because you're stuck in this area for so long, level 1 to 25, and even though, like, the, uh, main quest can pull you around the map, it does feel, like, kind of difficult if you go a little too over-level and then you get slapped around, or, you're, like, the curve starts to drop off. There's, like, multiple level spikes when it comes to this game, and that could, like, make you feel kind of weird, and that's another reason why... I'm kind of, I like, this is my first video on New World, even though I've put 100 hours into the game, because I didn't think I had any place to make content. I haven't been streaming it, because it's not my main audience, and I didn't think I'd be able to provide anything to the New World community at this time, because everyone kind of has the same thing to say about grinding. You do town board quests, and then you do faction missions, and then you just power level through that while following on the main story, and I was always ahead of the story, like, I would go to a point, it says you need to hit this level, I'd grind, hit that level, continue the story, expand, etc. And in that time, like, I just kind of did my own thing, and that's why I'm wondering, like, am I on pace? So, the response that this video gets will inform future videos. That if it's like, hey, I'm actually doing really well, and people want to know what my secret is to power level so well, then I'll do videos on, like, how I got where I am. If I'm just kind of doing average, maybe some feedback, and then I can, like, kind of maybe do some tip and trick videos about some of the cool things I've done. But if I'm just average, then I don't really see a point of making content, because I don't have much to contribute. So, I was just kind of content shutting up, not making content, and then just playing all night and doing whatever I wanted. 
but it was like that level 20-ish that got kind of awkward. Now, when I made it into Brightwood, that's when the game like really kicked on for me. I was like, ooh, I'm having fun now. Just like checking out this new area, doing all the new like missions and exploring all of this and like the experience rates were good. But as it started to tail off, you know, it's like, all right, I'm going to go into Weaver's Fen. Weaver's Fen is annoying. This place was rough. And then it like, kind of felt like I was getting set back a little and all this other, like, all this other stuff was kind of going on. And then the weird thing is, I found myself in Everfall for most of my late level 40 grind. Also, like, as I leveled up, I was doing the faction missions or the faction level ups as well. Getting my Destroyer, my Ravager, etc. off of that. And... What worked out really well with Everfall is that the quests clump up down here, and they also synergize really well with Windsward. I haven't sweat the game. I haven't, like, watched a lot of content. I haven't paid attention to the Reddit. I've mostly been playing on Instinct, and I think it's been serving me well. So I think, like, if you just have good game sense or MMO sense, but that is going to be a large part of people that's looking up guides. Maybe they got caught up in all the hype for New World. Amazon has been pushing this, like, crazy with all, like, the Twitch partnerships and all, like, the spots sponsor deals and stuff so that's probably scooped up a lot of people into this being their first MMO or maybe the first MMO they want to take seriously World of Warcraft wasn't from that for them RuneScape is effectively like a diet MMO there's not serious mechanics now I know you can get really sweaty with evolution of combat or PKing in old school RuneScape but you know when you're talking about a game like this where you actually have to press more than two buttons it, it can be a little intense and a little overwhelming so they might not have game sense, but overall, as long as like, you're just doing town board missions and following all the little things on the right side, can't go super wrong, I feel. And that's also why it feels kind of weird that I landed on the strategy I landed on, where I was just like, oh, everything kind of clumps up in the higher level areas, which are going to be on the outskirts. So I would pick up town missions like, look, all I could do is teleport here one two and then like uh nettle rest usually has two missions as well from the uh from the faction three four five six seven eight and then i would just like drown myself here and then go to weaver's fin do the town board missions there collect everything teleport up here where where i have an inn and my house so i'd go in house in cooldown comes back up and then i just paid like the cheaper house and then like just kind of cycle it that way then town board comes back up I claim all those uh, faction missions, and then I just run it down again, and I felt like I really turboed through my, like, level 44 to 49, and then level 49 to 50 was me doing Weaver's Fin, uh, finishing up the faction mission to become Destroyer, I believe is what it was, and then the Destroyer mission put me in Morningdale, and then I hit level 50 off of all of that, which let me go into the main mission, which put me in Eden Grove. And then I just kind of, like, start doing Eden Grove stuff. Because, like, everything's kind of close, you know? You get one here, you get here, 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 etc. I think there's a couple over here as well. So then I've just been doing a lot of grinding for that for my early level uh, 50s. I've also spent a lot of time out here in the Great Cleave. Like, even though it's a neutral territory and you can't... Like, the biggest problem here is you can't do town boards. But I was just kind of, like, enjoying the new settings and getting rare items and stuff. However, that really isn't super necessary because everything is so darn cheap. And that's another point where this game is going to get weird because different servers are going to have different populations and each server might have its own meta depending on if a streamer is there and who's emulating what. So it's going to be kind of inconsistent, but also kind of global and how people are roughly going to play the game the same or maybe just get on a lucky server and everything just falls in your lap but, i mean if we go right now we look at two-handed weapons i just went great axe i didn't have anyone telling me like yo you should run great axe i've heard a lot about like the ice gauntlet fire staff meta and like you know everyone needs a healer and stuff so it's probably good to have one of those in your friend group or something i just played the game my way and it worked. I went Unga Bunga Great Axe, and I was just like solo clearing things multiple levels above me because I was just constantly gear upgrading. And you can find some ridiculous stuff. So Great Axe, Forsaken Great Axe, plus 15 strength at level 22. So like you're getting mono stat Great Axe for whatever level you're powering up into with a gem socket if you want to kind of like meta into that $3. Yeah, I'm gonna call it dollars because I don't take these things so seriously that I'm like, well, it's called gold, not dollars. Yo, it's three dollars for the great axe, and like that's kind of true on anything you're looking to level. So I mean, like at, at level 22 and level 25, I just upgrade. Even if you like scroll down a lot, it's like, oh man, it's 20 for 
a decent great axe or something yeah and like the levels and the gear score you sort by gear score and then you can find whatever you're looking for or something so i mean like oh god we could we could be here for a while look at this plus 18 strength level 34 mortal lifesteal which is really good if you're just going unga bunga great axe and then 50 only cost 50 and I was also like getting really specific about some of my perks depending on like how my build was going one thing I really liked was insatiable gravity well because again like I could just pull and then aoe farm and if we look up that we can see uh depending on like gear score and stuff 20 and then like sometimes I'd have to wait you know 16 decks that doesn't work for me so I don't think there's an all str oh, 19 strength insatiable gravity well star metal axe okay that one's a little expensive but you would just kind of like find deals and i just kind of surfed like good deals and got lucky and stuff and i've also been literally playing luck build like i'm only getting armor and i'm only getting gear that has luck on it and i'm just having fun i'm just doing stupid things i want to do and i'm going max strength so level five that's kind of whatever it also depends on like the gear score sorting once again look at this level 25 gloves with luck max strength 20. And like I also had like sockets and stuff and like my gear has gotten messier as I get higher levels because it's kind of hard to fill in the gaps. But I mean everything has a pearl. I'm just memeing. I'm just having fun. Look at my character. Wait, where's my character? Oh, bio. I just rolled random, put a funny mustache on, and apparently I'm female. I didn't even know. I thought I'm just having fun. So like I'm taking the game seriously, not seriously, and I think it's still going well. Uh, my attributes all strength I thought it'd be really cool to just get 300 strength because that grit is ridiculous and then being able to 25% mining that's why my trade skill has 184 mining I don't know if this is good or not but I'm just vibing out here and I'm just power leveling 164 smelting I'm also really proud of my jewel crafting because like I found time to just do smelting and jewelry crafting and all this as well and now I can make whatever wacky necklaces and wacky stuff I want I don't think I have too much here, of course. But yeah, I've got like pristine things. I'm getting high tier stuff. I'm really proud of this, you know, adored mining luck. So it also like, again, very server to server with who's doing what on the server. But I feel like even though I came into the game late, I'm like one of the higher levels in the game because I thought everyone had level 60 by now. I thought I was like two weeks in game's already solved and there's really no point for me to be like doing much of anything but as i've learned the economy is still in shambles no one knows what anything is worth you can find deals i bought a pristine pearl which i think we can find if i show you guys my stuff here in everfall i got a pristine pearl for 100 gold at one point and the other ones were like 400 500 each so i'm sitting on those that's what the jewelry crafting's for i can't wait to make a full super giga luck set it's only 0.5 percent chance but it adds up so I've been biding my time I'm also just buying every pearl for like 50 to 100 and I'm just socketing into things that I go and I'm just I'm just doing whatever um adored luck armor mastery mastery adored adored um there's also my main one that I made that I think is pretty cool we got this plus 17 strength refreshing toast I made that so that's kind of how I've been vibing um plus 17 strength with luck so that's the god roll right there. This is from doing all the Weaver's Fen quests. Even though it's not strength, like 16 constitution, probably fine for my build. Double luck is insane. Luck. All, all strength luck. And I just bought that. I just naturally found it and accumulated it. So I could get whatever I wanted for my build. However I wanted it. Didn't go bankrupt. Doing decent on money. Maybe the pearls got a little egregious. Because like what I would do is I'd buy a pearl for every gear set, every couple of levels. So... That, that did end up costing a lot of money. Some of my gear had brilliant pearls. Some of them have regular. I think that's a brilliant pearl right there. Um, and then some had flawed. Like, early game. Like, pre-level 30. Everything had a flawed pearl on it. And I'm just like, maybe I get the RNG crazy luck. Maybe it doesn't matter and I'd be better off with other passives. Maybe I'm actually one of the fastest leveling players in the game. Just doing whatever. Therefore, it's okay. But I feel like I'm pretty stacked. And that's just because you can kind of get away with it. Just pay attention to the market. You know, people don't know what anything is worth, so you might be able to find, like, an incredible gear upgrade super cheap. Or even if it's overpriced, even if it's a little expensive, it might be worth splashing into because that's what, like, kind of turbo boosted me. That I was doing uh, Brightwood at, like, what, what was the recommended? 26? Yeah, I got into Brightwood around, like, level 24, and then I was, like, you know, I've been, I was early everywhere. I was doing, like, Great Cleave level 39 for a bit, and then, like, I just started, like, 
doing the Everfall grinding around level 40 something. And it just it just worked. I just fell into the groove. So you you'll you'll find your cycle. You'll find your routes, and then just like always find marketing opportunities, and you're good to go. All I really know is that my friends are like big World of Warcraft major MMO people, and I'm ahead of them. Like they have more game time than me, but I'm also ahead of them in levels and stuff. So I feel like I'm doing something right. And maybe that's just the whole fun- like, yeah, Weapon Mastery, I've only played Great Axe, and the secondary is just for stats. Like, that hatchet I have is, as you might have guessed, just a strength hatchet. It's just there for the strength bonus. And, yeah, apparently your secondary gives you strength. Boom, you can see the numbers move around as I equip it or not. So, yeah, it's like, I'm just- I'm just running in there, unga bungo, everything. So, if this stupid gear- this stupid, uh, build and, like, this setup is- working for me that I'm pretty sure anyone can do anything and just like enjoy the game and actually find ways to succeed like you do gotta sweat it you do get, gotta grind you have to like really devote yourself to the monotony and when I was like starting to play I'm like man I haven't done anything or I haven't gotten a level in a while I just think about RuneScape where it's like oh yeah going from level 1 to 92 is halfway there and that takes an insane amount of time and even like even like trying to get 99 in a skill can take dozens of hours so if I'm like close to capping in this game after only a hundred hours, eh, it's, it's, I'm probably doing pretty well. And, you know, I think I think I can offset that. I can justify it. And that's another thing about like making videos and contributions and stuff. I'm not looking up builds. I'm not taking a Reddit guide that's also probably crap. Like a couple of the videos I looked at to see where people stand, or a couple things I looked up, I'm like, that just seems decent. Like it doesn't seem like good or great advice, but people are following it. And that's things. I'm seeing, like, all these weird builds that people are pushing. I'm like, I don't know if that's actually, like, a good build or not. Or if it matters. I don't experiment with anything. Because I don't care to experiment with anything. Um, yeah. So, like, maybe maybe there is value in, like, this little route I found down here. Because it seems like I started leveling faster than all my friends. And I was, like, it felt more satisfied than getting, like, spread around some of the other places that are more miserable to explore around. Like, there's only one teleport point. I believe in Restless Shores. So, I mean, like, why do anything here, even though it is higher level? Uh, these kind of group up nicely. Like, you can just kind of run one, two, three on a lot of your quests, but there's no town board. So, it's like that's when you hit up, um, like an inn here, and then you have your home somewhere else, and you're doing town board there, and then you kind of bounce around. I don't know. It was messy. It was weird. But that's why I'm like, I don't know where this video is going because I need the feedback to see where I stand and to see if I came up with any good ideas. Um, I use the interactive map that has, like, all the ore spots. So that's where I did a lot of my mining. And I just kind of, like, found and discovered things my way for the most part. And maybe I hit greatness. Maybe I'm playing bad. But, uh, overall, New World. It's, uh, pretty cool. I've got my own little bits of insight on it. And we'll see where it goes from here. But if I'm playing 100 hours, I'm sacrificing content and live streams for it. Maybe just push out a video, show you guys. I'm, I'm on that train. If you play it too, neat. If you don't care, whatever. If you're new to the channel, because algorithm, then something's working out. And I'm just providing my own insight into the game. And maybe that has some benefit. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.